So as you can see, we have a whole lot going on right here, but we're focusing on the VZR Model 1 headset again, but staying on sound. Talking strictly about sound here. You all heard about the build and the style and the features and all that. If you haven't, go watch the standalone review. But the most important thing here, even when I was proof watching my video, I was like, okay, I covered a lot about the sound. You all know I can ramble about sound quite a bit in my videos, right? But even when I was watching this one, I was like, there's a few details I, I, I wanted to cover, or maybe I didn't cover as much as I, I really want to, you know, because I keep going back to this headset still to this day, uh, testing and using other ones. I was like, man, I want to get back to that VZR1, and I want to be able to explain that and put that a little easier for you guys. And that's why we have all these other headsets out, you know? Uh, again, a lot of you have been asking, how is it compared to the Audi-Easy, the PC-38X, the, the Mezes, the Steel Series, yada, yada, yada. And I'm gonna try to wrap it up for you, user to user. I'm no audiophile, and I, and I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be like an actual consumer to consumer. How do these stack up to, say, a name brand Razer headset that we're used to? And that's hopefully what I can do here today. And that's how we're gonna go about it. We're gonna fling right into Amazon. Right, because if you're shopping for this headset, that's probably where you're gonna go. VZR Model 1 Audiophile Gaming Headset is the title. That's a little intimidating, right? When it says Audiophile Gaming Headset, intimidating in two ways. Number one, you're like, Audiophile, do I need that for gaming? Number two, Audiophile, well, there's gonna be a price tag attached to that. And there is, $350. It's not cheap. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, well, the only one that might be priced above that is at the Steel Series Arctic Nova Pro Wireless over there. I think those are the only ones that come up to this price range. Even the Virtuosos are a little bit cheaper. So they're expensive, number one. They are. But scrolling even down further, I want to get into the wording of this because it's going to be a little, I don't want to say misleading, but I, let's just talk about it here. The best of everything. Wow. Those are some bold words to put on the headset right there, you know? They're talking about the, the cross weave, the build, all this, the best of everything as far as what it's packing. Sound, build, construction, right? Styling, all that stuff, the assembly of it, which we'll talk about. And we talked about it in the standalone review. Again, go watch that if you want. But focusing on sound, acoustic design that delivers. Again, I'm reading right off Amazon here. We'll go to their website in a second. But I want to talk about it as, again, we're looking at it right here. And the number one thing, we took a new approach on acoustic design, the headphones and microphones, based on the team's in, uh, incredible experience in design. And by the way, the guys that developed these, they gotta go go to the website. We can probably look at it here. I know what guys from Apple and everything, they got all these like uh, audio uh, gaming backgrounds. I mean, they got some backgrounds to back it up. And it's cool, it's like just talking with them. I did a couple of video calls with them. Their passion, it, it was, you know, I don't want to sound like trash talking, but we were talking nerd to nerd, and it was so cool. A lot of times you deal with companies, and they're like, okay, here's this product, uh, here's a reviewer's guide, you know, test it, do what you do, which is cool. I like that, you know, but when you get to a smaller company like this, and you feel their passion, you sense their passion, that's really cool, especially me being so passionate about headsets, right? Anyways, I'm getting off track here. So uh, the one thing I really want to focus off out of the gate is that cross-weave technology, okay? while we're talking about the VZR1. You all remember me showing you right here, right, where it has the little uh, holes in the driver. You don't see the whole driver like a standard headset. You got a couple holes and you see the driver down there. Some of the holes are bigger, some of the holes are smaller. That's letting uh, uh, more or less of the sound out of there in a certain uh, pattern right there, again, coming off your ears, whether that be so you don't have the whole driver hitting, so you got a big driver right like this, right? And it's hitting in there, so you got that sound bouncing off here, bouncing off there, bouncing off the bone of the side of your head right there. This is directing all that sound into your ear right there. And again, they showed me the graph. Now, it's not in here, but within each hole, you got, again, a little bit more frequency there, a little bit less over here, or a little bit more here, so those highs are even going to come through there a little bit more. And that's kind of, with that cross-weave technology, it, again, it's so hard to explain. I can pull out... Again, this thing that I showed in my video, which is, this is the marketing pamphlet here, and it shows the different colors. It's pretty much the frequencies right there. You a little bit more, a little bit less coming out of there. And it's so interesting, the results you get with it, right? And we're going to talk about these other headsets soon. But again, I want to focus on what they're saying first so we can be clear here. The one thing I, I want to get here, unique geometry of the cross-wave technology passive acoustic lens uh, over here resulting in improved separation, openness, and accurate 3D spatial positioning. I want to focus on that. 
accurate 3D positional focusing. Is that what it said? But anyways, <laughs> those are some words right there that I think a lot of people, here it is, oh, it's okay, it's right on Amazon as well. Improved separation, openness, accurate 3D spatial positioning. Same thing as on Amazon as in the reviewer thing, by the way. I think a lot of people can take that the way of competitive. Okay, well, I'm playing Valorant or you're playing uh, Rainbow Six or, or Call of Duty or something like that. Well, it said it had 3D spatial positioning. That clear as day to me as a consumer sounds like I'm going to get a competitive advantage. Okay, a, a lot of people take that as open back open back headphones. You all have heard me rant about it high and low. No open back headphones do not give you a competitive advantage. I'm sorry, they don't. They don't enhance your footsteps. They don't do anything like that. What it does, uh, and this is what I stated in this video. I don't got my notepad, so I'm probably going to forget what I said. Detailed, environmental detail, I think is what I called it, right? And that's exactly what I think this is. Open and accurate. So again, that environment's more around you. Spatial positioning. That, that, that's a hard one to really nail down. Spatial positioning. How are you going to take that? Is that saying, oh, hey, I'm going to hear that enemy over there or over there or over there? I, I, I don't know. I think that's a tricky one to put there, you know, because I take 3D spatial detail is the way I'd like to word it, right? Just like I stated right there is, you know, that environmental detail. That's how I think it should be worded. 3D spatial positioning sounds like you're getting some sort of competitive advantage. And honestly, no, I don't think you're getting that with this headset. I don't. But you are getting that environmental detail, right? Whether it be the wind or the water, a boat over here, or something like that. You hear that and you hear it really true. Nothing's drowning out. If you got anything over there, it's not drowning out. You're really getting all that detail of the environment, yet still the enemies and stuff, just like you get on any other headset. But it's delivered to you in such a pure format where it sounds like open back. Stick with me. Open back again. No, you're not getting a competitive advantage. You're just getting, it's like you got speakers sitting around you here, right? That's what open back is going to give you. Like you got speakers out there. And think about that. If you're playing a competitive game and you got speakers in front of you, are you going to have an advantage? No, you're not. It's going to hit, you're going to get that footstep, and it's going to bleed out throughout your room, right? We're not even talking about your environment of people talking or anything like that. We're not even talking about that. We're talking just about that sound, those footsteps hitting, bam, and they're escaping. They're gone. They're not locked into you. You know what I mean? That's what open back headphones do, okay? So you know, you're not getting no dang competitive advantage. I, 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 that thing just drives me nuts, and I can sit here all day talking about that. I think I made a video about it. Link down in the description. So that's what you're getting right here. You're getting that open back experience with that environmental detail. Hopefully you stick with me through that. And hopefully that makes sense, you know. Now, going further, either other than what they're saying right here, I'm going to flip over to their website. And again, it's showing all this stuff I'm talking about. They talking about the positioning and how it's coming into you. You can go look at all it right there. Uh, again, with these guys using 40 millimeter drivers, for range of 10 to 30,000, 32 ohms, you're going to be able to run it across anything, by the way. And, and talking about it with the 40, I, I think this is, again, I'm no audiophile, but this is my thought here with the 40 millimeter drivers. These guys are bass heavy, bass full, okay? It's, it's a warmer headset. I'm going through a lot of these over here, and I'm, I'm like, how can I nail it down? Because it's really, there's a lot of bass in this, you know, and you notice it coming from, just for example, my, uh, where are they? Dang, I don't have them. Oh, my Epos H6 Pros, right? I've always stated these guys are a little bit warmer. There's a little more bass in these compared to some other headsets. Steel Series, for example, right? These have more bass than that. You know what I mean? It's almost Astro bass, you know what I mean? But clarity, clear bass, it really is. It's delivered properly. And I think for my personal taste, I wish there were a little more highs in this. There are highs. But the base, it's just warmer. And when I'm playing a story game, I love it. Like, I go to this for a story game now. I go to it for a lot, honestly. Like, when I'm playing Battlefield, it's not so chaotic and high-pitched in your ears. You still have some of that full environment and just natural sound, which is which is really fun. But, yes, this headset is clear as day warm. There's, there's more bass in this. It's not Beats thumpy bass. It's a true natural bass, and you're still getting your highs. But clear as day, guys, this headset is is more on bass. Me personally, I wish the bass was toned down just a pinch. Not saying it's bad, but that's just my personal opinion right there, right? So 
again, now that we're looking at that core sound, some other things that I, I didn't talk about in my video are like the perforation holes in this. Most of us would think it's like for air, and that's what I asked the guys. I said, so is that for breathability in the air cushions? They said, no, that's for the base to breathe. And they go, even with these dots on the back, the 10 dots back there, those dots are placed in that pattern, and there's 10 of them because that's the way they had the frequency drawn in there for that base to breathe out. So even those little details are thought about into this headset. That, 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 that's how cool this is. Even right over here, the carbon fiber, it's real, real carbon fiber, not just a design, right? And again, when they put the whole headset, the ear cup together, everything fits so good. The sound absorption with the carbon fiber, but there's no vibrations within there either. Everything's just implemented in so well. You can even see like in here, you got the little notch and everything's, you got the screws. It's such thick, solid plastic. I mean, it's built amazing. And that's what they said. It's put together like that to prevent any of those vibrations coming from that sound and that bass hit. And you don't get any of it with it. You don't get any of that distortion, any of that vibration. Nothing's really messing with your sound. You're getting that core experience, which is really cool because when you come into some other gaming headsets, you'll kind of get that cheaper plastic feel and you catch that vibration when you get a hard bass hit, which again is going to affect that, right? You don't get that here. And, and that's what I like about it, the little details. You're catching on right now if you're sticking with me. All these little details build up to that sound experience, right? They, they really do. All right, so now that we talked about that core shopping experience, like you're interested, I'm like, you can listen to me talk all day long, but you're still gonna do your own research, right? So, so hopefully I kind of got that out of the way and we kind of got a good grasp of that core sound of this. But right now what I wanna do, I'm gonna get the uh, laptop out of the way here. I want to start talking about some of these other headsets, right? You see, we got a lot of popular headsets out here, and we're going to talk about them all. Let's go on and start right here, guys. PC38X EPOS. This might be the most hyped, I don't want to say hyped up, because I don't think there's that much, but it, it's just, it's a headset online that people rave about, and they think it's like the best out there. Let's start at the core. The build of this blows us away. This is gumball machine build compared to this. All right, I'm not here to bash these headphones. I'm here giving you straight consumer to consumer. The build of the PC38X is a piece of junk. The sound is good. It's open back, and you're not going to get, again, that advantage. You're getting that spatial environment. You do get that with it here, right? The sound is really fun with this. The mic is good with this. We're not talking about mic. I got to focus on that sound, right? The sound is really good on this, but again, you're still getting that open back experience. If you're playing Halo, what game I play a lot, a lot, of, a lot of bass on the uh, footsteps right there, or you need something that just has that back end bass, you're not going to get that here. If you're using playing Halo with these, it's just going to be, it's not a great experience. It's, I'm sorry, it's not. It's a great sounding headset, but again, it's not, I don't think it deserves near the hype it gets. It, it, it just doesn't. And the sound of these are quite similar but also quite different again this guy has more bass it has more bass than any of these just about right but again that detail and clarity environment sound that you're getting over here since these are being open back you're getting that over here which is which is really amazing but again it's it, it you get that immersion with these when you're not getting that over here with the pc38x and again i know these cost twice as much but you're getting three times as much headset compared to the PC38X. Next, a headset that I am seriously enjoying right now, pulling it back out, is the Epos H6 Pro. I am loving this headset, guys. I'm, uh, I'm not running it in the combo that I had, which that was a great combo, by the way. You know, I'm running it into my iFi Zen amp. That's how I'm using this. I'm also plugging in the controller, playing Uncharted and stuff. I'm just having such a great time with this headset because I feel like it's offering a lot of what I want now. I want a little more bass because I'm playing a lot of story games. I'm playing some Borderlands. I'm playing Uncharted. You know, then, of course, my Destiny and Halo and stuff like that. Even though I got uh, tons of headsets and I'm always using a whole bunch of different ones and switching them up, I, I do like to kind of stick to one. You know, it's just simple. And even though I'm using it on PC, I tend to bring it over to the console sometimes, you know. And I feel like the Epos H6 is doing darn near everything that I want from the build, the comfort, and the sound is just... It's really complete in what I'm looking for. It's doing a little bit of everything. It really is. I got a little more highs. The bass is toned down a little bit more than this over here. You know what I mean? Am I getting that really just pure detail clarity with this as I'm over here? No, I'm not. I'm not. 
you know, I mean, the build clearly blows it away for sure over here. <clears throat> but these have been the two that I've been bouncing back and forth from, honestly. But the Epos is such, I don't even want to call it fun. I want to call it productive, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Probably doesn't, right? It's just doing everything. I want to watch a video. Bam, it's doing it. I want to play a, a story-based game. It's doing it. I want to play first-person shooter. It's doing it. And it's doing it with the sound I like. Sound is subjective. Me talking here, this is my sound, guys. You might have a completely different preference of sound. And same with the other guy talking about a video, right? He may hate the sound of the Epos or these. You know what I mean? You're talking about it. Sound is personal preference. All right, we can't hate on someone else because we've got a different sound. But I'm loving the Epos A6, guys. It's doing great. Compared to these, these guys are definitely more bass heavy. Would I say one's better than the other? I wouldn't. I don't think I would. You know? I really wouldn't. That's good because this cost, it's up there, 180 bucks. I, I believe it is. Maybe right now you can get it for 150 and that's good. It's packing a lot at 150 Just having, gosh, I'm having a ball with that headset. I'm so glad I took it back out and started playing with it again. You know, it, it's a good one. Let's get to this because I know this is something a lot of you guys are asking about. The Arctic Nova Pros. Oh, let me get the wireless one over here. So we got the wired and the wireless, again, against the uh, VZR1. A lot of people are asking, oh man, I just bought the wireless headset. These are the same price, should have I got these? <clears throat> As I stated in my review of the Nova Pro Wireless, this is a headset that you're buying features. Awesome features, great features, feature packed. You know what I mean? Is it the best sounding headset you can get? No, not at all. Heck, the wired ones blow them away. The wired ones are phenomenal. They are. The other thing I, I would get a lot, this is a good point here, guys. I want you to listen to this one. With my Nova headsets, everyone, I don't want to say everyone, but I got quite a few comments down below. Well, you didn't even use, uh, man, what is it called? Not What's the software called, guys? I can't even think about it right now. Sonar? Sonar. Sonar software. Ah, technically, you didn't even talk about Sonar software. I use Sonar software. I dabble with it, pull out my EQs and stuff. That's not true, guys. That's, that's in my eyes, when I test headsets, you know, I talk about EQs and I dabble with them and I dabbled with the EQ on these because I can do it on the amp DAC. I can do it in the engine. It'll save the amp DAC. I can pull it over the console. I can pull it to my Mac. I can use it on my PC. Sonar, you can only use on PC and you have to have it open. I'm sorry, that's just not fair. This thing says Xbox on it. I've raved about it. You can use this on PS5, Xbox, Mac, Switch. Well, Sonar, you can only use on PC, guys. Okay, if this headset said the SteelSeries Sonar Arctic Nova Pro, that's how I would talk about it, you know? Is Sonar that much better than the stock EQ? You can pull out a little bit more, especially with the mic and stuff like that. But as far as core sound, you got a little bit more flexibility with it. But it's still at the core, it's the same. This is what I want you to listen to, though. The cool thing. People talking about sonar, and that's how you're gonna pull this headset out with this software. You know what about the VZR1? Everything I'm talking about, that that the uh, you know environmental clarity detail. You don't need any software. This is out of the box, guys. That's what that's what makes me so nerdy and excited, right? We can talk about 7.1, Dolby Atmos, you know, sonar sound, this, that, or the other. This is out of the box, and that's what's really cool. That's what's got me nerding out about this product. That's what really has me excited about it. The, the experience, the sound, and the joy you're gonna get out of it. You know, it's just, it's it's really fun. So anyways, talking about that core sound, yo guys, it's not hard to beat the Arctic's Nova Pro Wireless. And features, I don't think anything here is gonna beat the Arctic's Nova Pro Wireless. It's just not. But in sound, I think all of them might beat it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not saying they sound bad, but it's nothing, Exciting. It's nothing different. You know, it's a feature-packed gaming headset. Talking about the wired ones, guys. I love this headset. I absolutely love this headset. You get the high res on PC. You don't get it on console. Big stinker again. But even on console, the sound of this new dial in that EQ. I posted pictures on my EQ in the community tab. This headset is exciting. It's, it's definitely geared towards the highs. So almost complete opposite here. We've got a lot of bass over here. You got a lot of highs over here. You still get a, little, a lot of detail over here. I wouldn't say you're getting that environmental space, 
right? You're, you're not getting that. Not saying competitive edge again, stick with me, but you're not getting that open back type feel with that environmental breathability. You're not getting that air around you, you know? But holy smokes, this headset's exciting. That back end bass that just sneaks up on you and the headset starts shaking on you. Whew, man, no joke, this is stinking awesome and this is fun. You know, again, these, both of these headsets are awesome, but you gotta look at it. Like, you want that great sound, you're going here, over here, you're going features more or less. You know, uh, again, over here, you're going out of the box. But two very different. If you want more highs, you go to this. If you want more bass immersion, uh, that air around you, that environment around you, you go this right here. But all these, uh, again, these two are, wow, these these two are a real blast. Anyways, let's get those out of the way. So hopefully that covered it, guys. That's something I really wanted to cover in my standalone review that I forgot to talk about was so many people on Sonar software, especially my main reviewer that, and are they better than the Nova Pros? Yeah, they're better than the wireless one. The wired one, I think, is where I'd get a little iffy, especially on PC when you get into the high res. That's where it's really going to separate it right there. But again, it's hard to say because I'm saying on PC, I'm saying you need sonar. Out here, it's out of the box. Plug a 3.5 and that's what you're getting. That's what separates this, guys. All right, so which one do we talk about next? And I know what you guys want to hear. You want to hear about my Audioses, right? We're going to get to that. I got to like build up the excitement, right? We're going to talk about those. Let's talk about this. And why do I have the Virtuoso XTs out here? Well... This is a very close headset to this, believe it or not. Now, the hard thing, again, just coming right off Steel Series, it almost sits in the same place. This headset, the, the, the Virtuoso XT is whatever, they are so good when you dial in EQ and get a, or IQ and get a really good EQ, IQ, EQ, right? <laughs> Anyways, when you dial in that EQ, it is, mm, man, does it come to life. Holy smokes, it comes to life, and it is so, so nice. Unfortunately, the EQ doesn't save to the headset. So when you go to console, you're not getting that. You're getting that flat bass sound, which is, it's passable. It's good, but it's not near what you can potentially get with the headset. That's where it falls apart. But with the Virtuosos, you, you have those highs, but you still got that back-end bass. It's, I would call the VZR the Virtuosos on steroids. That's a pretty good example right there, you know what I mean? Think about the Virtuosos with the comfort I've always asked for, bigger ear cushions, a cozier headband, phenomenal build across both of them, you know what I mean? It's it, it, that, That's what it does, and, and again, like, what I would pull the EQ out to this to be would be what I get right here, but you're also getting that spatial sound, you know? No, not a competitive edge sound, just that spatial sound. Of course, the Virtuosos are packing way more features. You got the Bluetooth, you got the controls of the Bluetooth and all that. You got, you got a lot more features. There's, I don't even game a headset compared to a... You're almost looking at this like a pair of headphones now, right? So again, a lot of these got more features than the VCR. But at that core experience, what we're looking for, sound, comfort, mic, out of the box. You're catching my drift right here, right? But again, if you've used these and you wanted to compare them up, very similar, but think about the Virtuosos times like... Again, juiced up on steroids and everything. You're like, holy smokes, out of the box after you're getting 3.5 here. Really, really, really cool. And a great thing, again, talking about the Virtuoso, is like, y'all heard me say, this is probably the best build gaming headset out there. Same thing you got over here with the VZR. The build is just, it's premium. It's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to set these aside, and we're going to get back to those. Let's talk about the Razer Black Shark V2 Pros. And why do I have this one out here? This one's cool, because you got... Triforce drivers, right? You got your, your mids, your highs, your bass right down to your lows and all that. So these are really cool. It's definitely a bassier headset, just like we're talking about the VZR, right? And that's, that's one thing I've always stayed with. You got to talk about that, that bass on these. But the separation, the clarity of the bass with the mids and the highs, that's what's cool about the Razer Black Sharks. It's not jumbled. And I'm going to talk about it. You're going to catch what I'm talking about here soon when we talk about some of these other ones. But it's not jumbled. It's just really cool. But it is bass heavy. Right, it is bass heavy. Sometimes the warmth of this, depending what you're playing, will get into those highs a little bit. It really does. You don't get that too much with the VZR1. If it gets incredibly chaotic, you will get that. But still, it's not thrown at you, right? That's where that cross weave, that, that little disc in there it comes into place. It's not thrown at you. It's not just like someone screaming into your ear, you know? It's definitely still broken up really nice over here. So, coming over to the Black Sharks, again, it's delivered 
more towards bass, same with the VZR. You got that separation of each sound. Kind of, you got that over here with the VZR like that, you know what I mean? And again, when you kind of think about them, again, it's almost just like the virtuosos. You think about it just juiced up. Like times 10, that's, that's the Black Sharks compared to the VZRs, you know what I mean? It's really, really interesting when you go from them because, again, they're quite similar. They really are quite similar. I'm talking out of the box sound. That's the cool thing about these guys. It's out of the box. You've got that pretty good sound, you know, with those Triforce drivers. I really like the Triforce drivers. I really do. The Razer does good things with them. Some of their headsets are a little higher, some are a little more bass. This is definitely driven a little more bass. But if you like the core sound of the Black Sharks, if you use these and you like that core sound where it's a little warmer, a little fuller, you're going to like this. You're going to love this. That You really are. Because that's, as far as gaming headsets, Astros are close, but I would put it right here. Like, if you want a little more space, a little more detail, it delivered a little bit better, definitely a better build. You know, the Black Shark V2 Pros. These are like the V10 Pros. You know what I mean? That, that's what I would say right there. So if you like this sound, you're going to love the sound of the VZRs. So let's bring it over to the Astros since I just compared it over there. Actually compared it both to like the... Uh, Virtuosos and the Black Shark V2 Pros. So when we talk about these guys, I don't want to spill my coffee over here. Let's get that over there. We talk about the Astros guys. The Astros are known to have a little bit more bass, but with their stock configuration with the cloth pads, they almost got that open back vibe. Your sound's bleeding out, your sound's coming in, but that bass is going to hit and it's going to be gone because it's going right through those cloth pads. There's no pleather in them. You know, you can get the pleather cushions. I've never tried them. I really need to. But again, that sound's going to escape out you right there. But as far as that core sound, it's definitely warmer. It's fuller. It's, I would say it's a step down from Black Shark V2 Pros. Not saying they're bad. Don't give me that because I love the A40s. Heck, I used to use the A50s quite a bit. I just love the overall complete package they're offering, you know. But I think a better example is the A40s because it's pushing a little bit more, packing a little bit more, you know. But as far as that separation of sound... With them being open back, you're not getting it as much as an open back over here. It's just a really those cushions, you know, and it's you don't really get that spatial separation with these of the environment and stuff. But again, I want to give you that open back example where that sound is going to hit and it's going to bleed right out of those ear cushions. You know what I mean? That's why that's honestly where I'm going to put it as the downgrade from the Black Shark V2 Pros, honestly, is getting that sounds kind of closed into you, you're locked in there a little bit more. And you got the Triforce coming over here. It's kind of there, bam, and it's gone. Opposite over here, like, it's there. You catch it. You're with it. You're vibing with it. And you're moving on. You know what I mean? Oh, hopefully that makes sense. That's what's really cool. But again, as far as that core sound, I bring the Astros out. Because it's punchy, it's full, it's a fun headset. You know, it's definitely a head full. And you're getting that over here. You really are. Now, as far as the detail, clarity, separation, it's two different levels for sure. But why I had these out is I wanted to give you that example of that core sound of the Astros. Again, is warmer and punchy and really full. And again, you have that over here. And again, I put this, if, if you like that, like the Black Sharks, where I said, if you like that core sound of Black Sharks, if you like that core sound of Astro, you're going to love this. Again, you're getting more out of the box with the VZR1 compared to these is what I'm saying as far as that experience, you know. And of course, again, I want to talk about sound, but the build. Like there's no joke out of any of these, you know, the virtuosos right in line right there, but the build is phenomenal. Let's talk about what you guys really want to hear about. Are they better than the Audi Z Penrose? Again, I'm not here to bash these other headsets. I'm here to give you examples and, and talk about what they sound. Again, all these while they're on my table is because I love them all. They're fantastic headsets. They really are. Even though I'm saying a VZR might sound better here or this or that, you know what I mean? Maybe you don't need that extra boost. So who cares? You're just here to here to hear it out, you know what I mean? But talking about the Audi Easy's, you all know I love Audi Easy. Not just the Penrose, my LCD 2s, LCD GX, you know, LCD 2, LCD GX. You're talking three times as much as these guys. They're expensive. But they are still my mains. My LCD 2s, I love, guys. I love them. And even going to the Audi Z Penrose, I love this headset, guys. Whatever magic and trickery Audi Z is doing with their planar magnetic drivers, fluxer arrays, and all that stuff we've talked about before, 
they are doing it right. And I absolutely stink and love the sound of these. You're getting back in bass, you're getting those highs, you're getting that detail, you're getting that clarity, you're not getting any of that vibration off your head as I talked about before, which you're, again, I'm gonna get to that, which you don't get over here with, again, the uh, driver right there, the little cap above it with the different, letting different uh, amounts of sound coming out there. It's not vibrating off your head here. It's not a full driver just sitting there thinking about a subwoofer in a car. It's not, you know, just going like that against your head. You're not getting that with the audio easy. So you're getting that clear, fun, manageable sound, right? Sometimes you're using a headset and you're kind of like, yeah, I need to get this off. You know what I mean? This is starting to drive me nuts. Give me a little bit of headache. It's maybe a bit much in the highs, maybe a bit much in the lows. You know, you don't get that with audio easy. You don't get that over here. Cause again, with, uh, you know, it's just putting it out there perfectly into your head where you're not getting that full driver just punching into your head for a whole hour while you're gaming. And you don't get that with audio easy. Now, as far as core sound, I would call the audio easy that natural, pure sound, that curve. I get that smiley curve a lot. You know what I mean? You have that over here. This guy is clear as day, more bass. Do I want to sit here and say this sounds better than that or that sounds better than that? They're different. They're definitely different. Let me let me put it like that. Clear as day. If you're going one to one, you're going to catch the bass on this. I'm like, okay, this sounds warm. But after you build into it, you're into your game, you're going to be like, wow, I'm really getting something fun here. You know what I mean? Which is what you get over here with the odd easies as well. You definitely get that fun sound. This is a hard one, guys. Am I going to say one's better than the other? You know what's cool? This is the cool thing again. With the VZR1, it's 3.5, it's on every single platform, it's plugged and played and you're getting that. You know what I mean? Over here you got wireless, you got a lot of options and software, you got Bluetooth and all that stuff. The build over here is definitely better. This out of the box comfort is phenomenal, but focusing on sound, man, I really enjoy both of them. It's almost like a mouse, right? You all heard me talk about mice before. Don't just have one mouse. Have that flicking and dipping, that smaller, lightweight mouse, whatever. Then have a mouse over here that's like a, a palm palm full, a bigger mouse. I got a video coming up talking about it again. You know, kind of think about Zowie, right? You got a smaller mouse than an EC2 or something like that. Or a Viper and a Death Adder. You always want two mice on your desk for the situation. You're not going to use that tiny little fingertip mouse when you're working. You're going to get a hand cramp. You want, you want a nice, cozy mouse. And that's where I put these. This is like, I if I was going in a fully immersed story game... I think I might pick, ah, oh man, I can't pick, guys. I love both of them. They're different. I can't say one of the one is better than the other. I can't say this is this better than this, kind of like I did with the Black Sharks or the Astros. We can't say that here. They're two different headsets. They're both exciting. They're both fun. They're both offering something really interesting. If you get this, I, if you have the Audi Easies, I wouldn't say go buy the Virtuoso. If you have the Audi Easies, I wouldn't say go buy the... Steel series or something like that. Heck, the Audi Easy won that battle. You know what I mean? This is something where I'd say it's a different experience and you're going to have fun with this on the side. It's not the same as this. It's different. And you're still going to get that excitement and that quality that you get with the Audi Easy's. It's the best way I can put this one, guys. That's tough. So why did I wait till the end to talk about the Meze 99 Neos? Well, if you watch the standalone review, you know why. Because the sound signature was quite similar here. Definitely a little bit more bass, kind of full in you, and everything kind of did what it did, but it, again, it had that warmer sound. So me talking about all these, the Audi Easy's, whatever, even talking about the Black Sharks being more bass driven or whatever, as far as that core right there, I would say these almost sounded just like these, as far as that core sound. Now, talking about getting into games, hot and heavy situation, Call of Duty, you got score streaks, Destiny, you got all these enemies around, you got all sorts of stuff going on, right? The Mezes, after testing these for so long, again, I, I gotta hold myself back because I don't wanna bash anything here. I love my Mezes, guys. I love every single one of these headsets. So don't think that's what I'm saying. But I wanted to take my Mezes off. I wanted to take them off so fast, and I love them. I love them. That driver, this is where I get to that point. That driver is all around your head, and it's just sitting there vibrating and pushing in and you can tell it's almost like you it, do i say it's like torture it's like you just want to say please make it stop please make it stop let this scene be over and let me get into a different scene 
I sound like I'm bashing it now. I'm not. Because again, I still love them. And I still use them a lot. I really do. But when you use something that's offering something different and you know you have that, you're going to go to it. You know what I mean? It's like like a roll-up window in a car. Well, hey, you got a power window. Let me use the power window. You know what I mean? It's something that simple and basic that you notice and you're going to be driven to it now. You know, you know what I mean? Like, and that's the experience I had here. With them both having close to the same sound, it was so interesting because I could, I could catch that, the same sound. But when I put one onto the other and that driver going off there and vibrating since it's a full driver just hitting you everywhere and just all at once at you, it was weird. It almost sounded like it made me want to say, why? Why is this happening? And again, that's where the VZR1 came into and it was... And that's why I saved this for the end, because that's where that mind-blowing experience came into play. I'm like, holy smokes, I'm catching on to this here. And this is, now that I got that core sound, it's like I'm really not necessarily hearing it and feeling it. It was really crazy, mind-blowing. It's just, you hear me stumbling over my words right now. That's how interesting it was, you know, I'm just nerding out, you know, and it was just, it was an experience that had to be experienced. It's, it's, it was crazy. And that pretty much, hopefully with all these examples compared to the other ones here, that's where it kind of comes into play. It's that experience, not only in sound, feel, again, the quality of the product and everything. It's just like, it's something else. So you still might be stuck in that dilemma. Should you get the VZR1? Is it the best gaming headset ever? Only you can decide what's the best gaming headset ever. You may still like your, uh, what do you call it? The HyperX Cloud 2s. People love that. It's under 100 bucks. That could make it the best gaming headset. It's a great value. It's a great build. You got great sound. Those are three great qualities to make the best gaming headset ever. I don't think I'd give it the best comfort. All right. But anyways, it's going to depend on you. It's an expensive headset. Don't think about this, as I stated in my review, don't think about this as just a gaming headset. Think about this as a pair of headphones as well. Think about this as an experience, right? That's what this is. You don't want to, you know, look at postcards and watch YouTube videos about where you're going to go on vacation. You're going to want to go and experience it. That's what this is. You know what I mean? It's like the Audi Easy's. You all have heard me rant and rave about the Audi Easy's. Some of you might not have jumped on it before. Now you've jumped on it and you're like, and I've always stated that with the Audi Easy's, guys. I've always stated that. It's so hard to explain. It's something you need to experience. Go watch my main reviews and you catch me that. And a lot of people use that. Is it better than this? Better than that? Better than that? I said, yes, 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 yes. And so many of you guys, I mean, don't get me wrong, this always sounds subjective. So there's always that one or two, you know, a couple of people that come back and say, ah, I don't like the sound. But 99% of the people come back and say, holy smokes, those audio blew me away. And the same thing is just struggle to find the words for it. And that's what you're getting right here. Again, don't get me saying that these are the audio That's not what I'm saying. It's totally different. But it's an experience that you have to experience to really grab on. And that's where the headset sits. I can't sit here and say it's the best headset. I can't sit here and say, go buy it now. It's expensive. And something up in this price range, just like with the uh, Arctic Nova Pro Wireless, it's something you need to decipher. Are you going to utilize the features and functions on the Arctic Nova Pro Wireless? Okay. Clear as day win. Right? Can you justify this? Do you want to experience that? Then it's going to be a complete win for you. It's a complete win for me, top to bottom, comfort bill, all that, yada, yada, you know? So again, you wrap it up and decide... Is it going to justify for you? That's the only way this can be. I highly recommend it worth a try, and I and I want to hear what you think. And the cool thing, guys, here, a little spoiler at the end. This is coming from the guys over at VZR. This is just the beginning. Right now, this is just the beginning. There's more to come.